Welcome to Mastering Solutions. In this general problem, they tell us that you're driving to the grocery store at 20 meters per second, and when you're 110 meters from an intersection with a red traffic light, they tell you that your reaction time is 0.7 seconds and break with constant acceleration. So they want to know how far are you from the intersection when you first begin to start the brakes. Part B says what acceleration will bring you to rest right at the intersection. And how long does it take you to stop? Starting with part A, we need to figure out how far we are from the intersection when we first start braking. So if we draw a line here to represent the 110 meters, how far do we go in that 0.7 seconds? So velocity is the change in the distance over the change in time. And if we isolate the distance, we multiply both sides by the change in time. So that will cancel and we're left with the change in the distance is equal to velocity times time. And so what we can do is we can break this up a little bit further. If we say the x final minus x initial is equal to velocity times time, we can move the x initial over. And so what we'll have is, let's do it down here, x final is equal to x initial minus velocity times time. So we're just making it a little bit simpler for us. There's two ways that you can do it that give you the exact same end result. So the X final of where we'll end up is equal to 110 meters minus the initial velocity. The initial we said is 20 meters per second. So 20 meters per second. And the time that we're going before we start to break is 0 0.7 seconds. So this right here is how far we're going minus from the 110 meters. 110 minus 20 times 0.7 gives us 96. So the X final will be 96 meters from the stoplight when we very first start to break. Another way that you could have done it, which will give you the exact same answer, is you could have said, okay, well, I know the velocity formula gives us delta x is equal to velocity times time. So I'll just do 20 meters per second times 0.7, and that would have given you 14. And then you could have said, okay, well, I'm 110 meters minus the 14, and it will give you 96. But you can see how this formula right here represents what we just did in a longer way. So if you did it either way, don't be concerned. You didn't do anything wrong. It's just we're saving ourselves a little bit of time by doing it this way. Moving on to part B, we say what acceleration will bring you to rest right at the intersection? So we'll be using kinematic equations and we'll be using V final squared is equal to V initial squared plus two times the acceleration times the change in the distance. The reason we're using this one is because we don't have a time. We don't know how long it's going to take us to actually do the stopping motion. We know that it took us 0.7 to start braking, but that doesn't tell us anything for how long we're braking for. This one, you can see we have everything in the equation. We have the final velocity, we have the initial velocity, we're looking for the acceleration, and we know the delta x. So you can see that all we have to do is isolate the A and then plug in the numbers. So if we move over by subtracting velocity initial squared, we'll end up with V final squared minus V initial squared is equal to two times the acceleration times the delta X. Now, if we multiply both sides of the equation by two delta X, that will cancel out this two delta X. And then let's come down here and we'll be left with acceleration is equal to V final squared minus V initial squared divided by two times the delta X. In this case, the final velocity is zero because we're stopping, so that can go away. And so when we rewrite this, what you need to keep in mind is that we need a negative velocity initial squared. So that needs to remain outside of the parentheses, and that'll be divided by two times the delta X. So if we plug in our values here, we have negative 20 meters per second, and that's squared, divided by 2 times the delta x, which in this case will be 96 meters. Negative 20 squared divided by 2 times the delta x, which is 96. And that needs to be in parentheses to give us the correct answer. 
So the answer is a negative 2.1 2.1 meters per second squared is the acceleration or deceleration that we'll need to stop right at the intersection. For part C, they tell us that how long does it take you to stop? So we'll be using kinematic equations again. The equation that we'll be using in this case is V final is equal to V initial plus acceleration times time. If we move over V initial, just like we did before, we have V final minus V initial is equal to acceleration times time. The V finals we talked about before is zero. So we have negative V initial is equal to acceleration times time, but we don't want a negative V initial. So let's multiply everything by negative one. So what we'll end up with is V initial is equal to negative acceleration times time. And now what we're trying to solve for though is time. So let's multiply both sides of the equation by negative a. So up here, let's rewrite it one last time. So we have time is equal to the initial velocity divided by a negative acceleration. One of the values of going through the equation and simplifying it and solving it for what you need before plugging in, in, in any numbers is it avoids some confusion. In this case, a lot of students will be tempted to look at this and say, hey, I have a negative a, this is negative, perfect, and they will do velocity initial divided by 2.1, but what we need is actually a positive 2.1 because it's a negative times a negative acceleration from here. So the initial velocity is 20 meters per second divided by negative, negative 2.1 meters per second squared, 20 divided by 2.1 meters per second squared gives us, we can round that from 9.5, let's just round it to 10 seconds. So it'll take us 10 seconds, whereas if you don't do that, you'll get a negative number, and hopefully most people would catch it, say, oh, well, I can't have a negative time, obviously, but it could trip up some students, they don't think about it, plug in negative 10, and then get it wrong.